Resultant force, just a fancy way to say, if we're multiple forces acting on the same object, end of the day, what happens? For example, tug of a war, or maybe you're pushing a box with your buddy, and where does the box move? Well, depend on who pushes harder. Or in the case of this poor fellow here, he has three forces acting on him, parachute, gravity, and wind. So where does he end up going? As a matter of fact, let's use this example and take a look at what are the steps needed to find a resultant force. For this particular case, let's go through the overview. There are four steps needed to find a resultant force. The first one, of course, is to label all the forces. Second one, the most important one, is called a shadow. And the reason we call it a shadow is if you were to shine a flashlight on a force that's not behaving, it's not laying on the x-axis or oh, y-axis, if you were to shine it right directly above, the shadow is going to end up on the x-axis. Okay, that's called fancy term is decompose the force. But what really is what you're looking for is shadow. And if I were to rotate this flashlight sideways, and then there would be shadow on the back of the wall on the y-axis. Now I successfully decompose the force into two components. The reason I want to decompose the forces is that I want to add them in the third step in order to find what the resultant force is. All right, so that's the four steps. Let's take a look at this example and do one by one. The label, there's a 500 going upward, 300 going sideways, 45 degrees, and gravity of 1,000 newtons. Incidentally, it's about 225 pounds with the conversion factor of 4.4. Three forces, so we're going to label them. Next one is the important one, and that's to shadow it. Now I have one force I need to shadow. That's the wind. It's 45 degrees northeast, and using the trig identity, I'm going to have a east component of 212. And that's the cosine, radical 2 over 2. And I will have a north component of same value because sine and cosine happen to be the same. Okay. Next step, I'm going to add. On the north-south axis, I have 500 going upward, and I have components of the wind, 212 going upward, and I also have a gravity of 1,000 going downward. All right, so along y-axis, if I would add them together, I would have 1,000 minus 500 because of this opposite directions, and I have 212 subtracted out as well. Okay, along the x-axis, that's pretty easy. I only have one component of 212. Now, to put them together to find the resultant, I'm going to have draw a box, and the diagonal connecting the box is my resultant force. Okay. Hypotenuse, putting it together, I have 288 squared, 212 squared, and take a radical root. And to find the angle, it's the arc tangent, which happened to our case is 38, 36 degrees, pardon me. Okay, so to do a quick recap, the four steps, label, shadow, add, and resultant. For our case, this poor fellow is going to be drifting downward 36 degrees northeast, southeast, pardon me, and at 358 newtons. That's the magnitude. Hi, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Please share or comment this video. Together, we can make math easy again.